Hey everyone, I am finally in the fish room with the camcorder and uh, just got home from work and uh, the kids are all coming home from the zoo. Normally our house is a has a decibel level somewhere around like a U2 concert so it's kind of hard to find time to make a video but things are quiet and uh, so here I am and I thought I'd just show this tank off it's looking really nice I, I love this tank and I guess it kind of shows that there's a million ways to kind of get your hobby on if the if that's kind of the way to say it because for me this is a little bit of a departure there are no planted plants in this tank there are no floating plants there's no there's nothing it's an algae tank and uh, which is kind of a funny concept for me because when I was getting into the hobby I was terrified of the idea of algae but I think you kinda need to embrace some of that kind of just you know life happens kinda stuff and I love this tank it's a high light there's um, a Phoenix planted plus on a 10 gallon and it's just um, growing algae but these live bearers are constantly browsing on algae and they keep it in check really well and it I think it provides a lot of food you know when you've got various stages of fish like in live bearer tanks you kinda have to come to the realization I've got babies all the time I've got adults all the time I've got various degrees of juveniles and you just can't feed all the time without an auto feeder and algae really is an easy way for them to just kind of eat all day long so I've got um, I've got a gang um, gang valve on this guy I've got two sponge filters when I did a water change the other day I changed I cleaned that filter but I didn't touch that one and you can see it's got a little crop of algae on there that they're grazing on and 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 I'll do that um, set of sponges next time I change I do this this tank next week sometime and I kinda like that I think there's some benefit to um, having some sponges that go a bit anaerobic maybe and uh, have a different type of bacteria in there and uh, so what else can I say there's it's um, fluorite substrate this is my only tank that has fluorite and I like it it's kinda of fun I've got a massive population of assassin snails and I I have they've they've won the war there are no more either pond snails bladder snails there's nothing and I'm not sure what they're feeding on, but they're living. Um, but it's I, I've taken out a pile and put them into other tanks. But they're they basically cleared this tank. I didn't think it would happen ever, but they they outdid the uh, pond snails, which is amazing. I've got uh, some yellow jacket endlers in here and I I didn't start too long ago I, they were kind of an impulse purchase I picked up two pairs and there are a couple in here and, and there's one in particular that is awesome his stripes are amazing and I'm seeing I'm I'm looking over the camcorder see if I can find him because he's really cool and and uh, he's got great appearance and I'm thinking I need to pull him out and uh, use him in a, in a little colony by himself. There he is. So, oh gosh. He's faster than me. There he is. He's in the back. He's showing off. But his pattern is incredible. He's got really nice, one side of him has not quite as nice, but one one side, his stripes are perfect. I mean, they're evenly spaced, they're dark, and his um, paddle tail, spade tail, has a nice outline around it. It's really nice. 
the um, it's easy to tell the portholes from the um, yellow jackets. Let's see if I can find an example. So portholes, they're born with spots. So porthole, uh, Corey, you need to get out of the way. Porthole, see how they have like little their little spots down the sides, and the yellow jackets are basically the standard kind of guppy olive bodied. Um, and of course, when I want to find one, there are none. But they sent. Oh, there we go. There's there's a juvie right there. So they tend to the um, portal. There's a Giardinus back there. I've got some odds and ends in here. I've got some. You'll see some. There's two Limia sulfurophilia males in here, and uh, they're really fun. I just could never find any females. There's a male. He's got that orange dorsal. He's got a kind of a purplish body. And he's the dominant one, so he's all colored up. The other one is not quite as colored, and he gets picked on a little bit. And I'm not sure he's around. But uh, anyways, I've got um, pygmy quarries in here, and they love all these ledges. There's, if I go down in here, there's a couple right there. They love to be up off the bottom and in amongst the ledges. You can see there's a pack in there. I love that. I love my quarry cats just packed onto ledges. That's how I want my quarry cats. Look at that guy. And they, that's a fun species. They're not quite as midwater swimming as the Histatus, um, but they're not as bottom dwelling as either the you know, your standard quarry is what you think of. They do swim up in the midwater. There's some more right there. I think there's a group of about six or seven in here. It's funny, when you let this many fish in, in one little tank, they you kind of lose count, but they're fantastic. There's the other Lumia. So you see how he doesn't quite have the same... Um, colored flag dorsal he gets picked on and so I've got dominant orange guy and slightly less orange picked on guy and they just kind of live their existence in here with the portholes I do have a few um, cherry shrimp in here but not too many the for whatever reason, they haven't really gotten buried in here, the, the females. I've had one buried female, but I, I'm not sure if the portholes kind of picked on her or she just wasn't feeling good. But um, I haven't really gotten too many new shrimp. It's nothing like the Picta tank, which is in the other room. That tank is pure shrimp insanity. So... Anyways, just kind of a fun video, rambling on a bit, but thought I'd show off some uh, some fish and just kind of show you uh, what's going on in here. All right, we'll uh, talk to you soon. Have a oh, I did want to do one shout out for those of you who uh, might be watching my channel and um, don't know Glenn Hawkins. He's been doing some um, chat room stuff on uh, YouTube, and I would encourage you to join us. It's been a blast the last few uh, chats. Um, there's a lot of regulars. We get on there and, and uh, chat about fish. You can ask questions and uh, see what we're doing, and it's been really fun. So if uh, if that's something you're into or you want to if you have some uh, questions regarding fish and fish keeping uh, come on by go by Glenn's uh, YouTube channel um, he's got a chat uh, every once in a while maybe once a week maybe twice a week and uh, it's just kind of one of those things uh, subscribe to him and then uh, just kind of keep your eyes peeled for a uh, chat 
and uh, hope to see you there. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.